Today I'm going to give you a first look at a new Z690 motherboard from ASUS. It's the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero, which is a high-end motherboard currently selling in the UK for around about £520. OK, let's go ahead and get it unboxed and take a closer look at it. So working along the bottom of the motherboard from left to right, first of all we've got a HD audio connector, next to that we've got a 4 pin 12 volt RGB connector with two 3 pin 5 volt RGB connectors right beside that. Then we've got three 4 pin PWM fan connectors, then we've got two USB 2.0 headers, just above that we've got a TPM header. Just to the right of the USB 2.0 header, we've got a 2-pin temperature sensor header. Then we've got a pump header. Then we've got some liquid cooling headers, so if you're going with a custom loop, you're going to be able to monitor both the temperature and the flow of your liquid. Finally, at the bottom right-hand side, we've got our front panel connectors. Then working our way up the right-hand side of the motherboard, first of all, we've got a right-angled USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. Then we've got six SATA connectors, followed by another right-angled USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. Next to that we've got a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 header to connect up your case's front panel type C connector. Next to that we've got two power connectors. The smaller 6 pin connector is to provide supplemental PCIe power. Next to that we've got a standard 24 pin power connector. Then we've got three buttons. The first is the flex key. By default this is set to reset. Although in the BIOS you can reprogram this to something else, for example safe boot are turning the lighting on the motherboard on and off. Um, just above that we've got our start button to power on the system and then above that we've got our retry button which if you're into overclocking you'll find this particularly useful. Finally above this we've got the motherboard's third and final ARGB header. Working along the top of the motherboard from right to left first of all we've got our postcode LED screen with the indicator lights just below that. Then we've got four PWM fan headers so we've got the CPU fan header, the CPU opt, AIO pump header and our first system fan header. On the top left of the board we've got two 8-pin EPS power connectors providing additional power to your CPU. In the middle of the motherboard we've got our new LGA 1700 socket and mounting holes. So if you look closely at the mounting holes you'll notice one of the really cool things Asus is doing with their Z690 motherboards and that is that we've actually got two separate mounting holes here. One of them is for the new LGA1700 standard, while the other one is backward compatibility with LGA1200. So you've already got an LGA1200 cooler, you're going to be able to use it on this motherboard without picking up an additional bracket. The motherboard features 20 plus 1 power stages, and as you would expect with a premium motherboard, we've got large heat sinks over the VRM. We've got four DDR5 slots, which will accommodate up to a maximum of 128 gigabytes of RAM, at up to 6400 megahertz overclocked. The motherboard has some great looking ARGB effects over the IO shield. We've got 3x16 PCIe slots, the top two support Gen 5 speeds, while the bottom one supports Gen 4 speeds. So this is where I get to show you another one of the really cool features ASUS have added to this motherboard. So if you built yourself a PC recently, particularly with a large graphics card and an air cooler, once you've installed the graphics card and the air cooler, it's really hard to reach the clip to release your graphics card. So Asus have thought of this and they've added a little button just to the right of the fourth RAM slot. When you press this button, it releases the clip on the top PCIe slot. And I would imagine over the next year, all the rest of the motherboard manufacturers are gonna copy this idea. In terms of M.2 SSD support, this motherboard will support up to a maximum of five M.2 SSDs. That's three directly installed in the board with up to additional two on their Hyper M.2 card. In terms of the onboard support, Socket 1 and 3 will support Gen 4 speeds, while Socket 2 is limited to Gen 3 speeds. Taking a closer look at the M.2 slots, you'll see that these feature ASUS's quick release clips for securing your M.2 card to the motherboard, so you're not going to have to use M.2 screws. Taking a closer look at our Hyper M.2 card, we don't have any cooling fans, so it is passively cooled, but there is some pretty beefy heat sinks on it. If we remove the four screws and open the card up, you'll see that we've got two M.2 SSD slots. The speed and availability of each of the Hyper M.2 slots depends on which PCIe slot you plug the card into. 
So if you go ahead and plug your Hyper M.2 card into either your top or middle PCI socket, it's only slot number one in the Hyper M.2 card that will be activated. Slot two will be disabled. So you plug it into the top PCI socket, slot one will run at Gen 4 speeds, while if you plug it into the second socket, slot one will run at Gen 5 speeds. It is important to mention that the plug-in Hyper M.2 card into either the top two PCIe sockets will reduce the lanes available in the other socket from 16 to 8. If you want to use both slots in the Hyper M.2 card, you need to plug it into the bottom PCIe slot on the motherboard, and both slots on the M.2 card will then run in Gen 4 speed. Taking a look at our rear I.O., as you'd expect with a motherboard in this price point, it features an integrated I.O. shield. So working our way from the top down, we've got a BIOS flashback and clear CMOS buttons. We've got a HDMI connector and two USB 2.0 Type-A connectors. Then we've got two Thunderbolt 4 connectors and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. The motherboard features seven USB 3.2 Gen 2 headers. Six of them are Type-A and one is Type-C. We've got the antennas for our Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. And then we've got our standard audio connectors for our 7.1 surround sound. Taking a look at all the accessories included in the box, so we've got extension cables for both the ARGB and standard 4-pin RGB connectors. We've got four SATA cables. We've got the Hyper M.2 card that I've already shown you. We've got two screws to secure the M.2 drives to the Hyper M.2 card. We've got the M.2 Q-latch packages. We've got the antennas for our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. We've got a Q connector which combines all the front panel wires into a single plug. We've got a GPU support bracket, a user guide. It's nice to see we've got a USB with all the utilities and drivers on them rather than a CD. And then we've got some ROG stickers, a keychain, and a thank you card. So this looks to be another really solid motherboard from ASUS. So really looking forward to doing a build with this motherboard. I've got one all lined up and that should be coming to the channel in about two weeks time. So if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button so you'll get notified about when I make that video. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up as well. Thanks for watching.